let's go through scenario examples to recap and help you better understand what hair follicles go through in androgenetic alopecia before onset, during onset, and during treatment. Before the onset of androgenetic alopecia, the hair growth cycle in a healthy individual generally follows a well-balanced pattern. In the anagen phase, the longest phase, hair grows continuously for three to seven years at about half an inch per month. Hair follicles remain active, supported by essential nutrients and growth factors, resulting in full-length, thick hair. After this, the hair enters the telogen phase for around three months, during which it stops growing but remains attached to the dormant follicle. About 10 to 15 percent of all hairs are in this phase at any given time, and at the end of this resting period, the hair naturally falls out and is replaced by new hair entering the anagen phase. In a healthy scalp, the ratio of anagen to telogen hairs is around 85 to 15 or 90 to 10, ensuring a predominance of growing hair. This balance results in full, healthy hair with minimal shedding, as new hair constantly renews what is lost. During androgenetic alopecia, without any treatment, the hair growth cycle undergoes significant changes, particularly affecting the lengths of the anagen and telogen phases. In the anagen phase, growth phase, the cycle becomes markedly shorter. Instead of lasting three to seven years as it would normally, this phase now only extends for several weeks to a few months. Such a reduction in growth time prevents hair from achieving its full length and thickness. The hair that does grow is often finer, weaker, and less pigmented, a phenomenon known as follicular miniaturization. Simultaneously, there is an increase in the number of hairs entering the telogen phase, resting phase, prematurely. While this phase generally remains around three months in duration, a greater proportion of hair follicles shift to this phase, disrupting the balance between anagen and telogen phases. In a healthy scalp, the anagen to telogen ratio is typically around 12 to 1 or 10 to 1. However, in cases of androgenetic alopecia, this ratio shifts dramatically to approximately 5 to 1 or even less favorable. In more severe instances, these changes lead to more shedding and visibly thinner hair on the scalp. The overall density of hair decreases because the growing hairs are fewer, finer, and more prone to shedding due to the increased proportion of follicles in the resting phase. This cycle of shortened anagen and increased telogen phases contributes to the appearance of baldness, particularly in areas commonly affected by androgenetic alopecia, such as the crown and hairline. When an individual with androgenetic alopecia begins treatment with a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor like finasteride or dutasteride, and if the hair follicle isn't too damaged by DHT, the hair growth cycle gradually recovers through a process known as stepwise follicular augmentation. The reduction of DHT allows the hair follicles to grow for progressively longer periods in each cycle. Initially shortened to just a few months due to androgenetic alopecia, the anagen growth phase starts to extend, giving the hair more time to grow thicker, longer, and stronger with every new cycle. As a result, the hair shafts become more robust and pigmented, leading to a fuller appearance. Meanwhile, the telogen resting phase shortens as the anagen phase extends. Over time, fewer hairs remain in the resting phase, reducing excessive shedding. The balance between the two phases improves, shifting the anagen to telogen ratio in favor of more hair follicles actively growing rather than resting. This results in a healthier proportion of hair follicles in the anagen phase, effectively stabilizing hair density. During the initial stages of treatment, follicles synchronize in their cycles, leading to a period of heightened shedding as they adjust to the healthier growth pattern. This phenomenon is known as synchronized shedding. However, over time, the follicles desynchronize and each finds its unique rhythm, reducing shedding as their growth cycles normalize. With continuous treatment, hair growth can gradually stabilize above baseline levels as the follicles normalize. This improvement may continue over several cycles, eventually leading to a plateau in hair density that is higher than the pretreatment levels. Stepwise follicular augmentation significantly improves the appearance of hair, though it may not fully reverse the miniaturization of severely damaged follicles. Nonetheless, those follicles that respond to treatment continue to improve gradually, creating a fuller and thicker head of hair.
The natural hair growth process is quite sophisticated, and maintaining the balance between growth and shedding phases is crucial for healthy, voluminous hair. In healthy individuals, most follicles are typically in the anasian, actively growing phase, while a smaller number are in the telogen, resting phase. Androgenetic alopecia drastically shortens the anagen phase when it affects the scalp. As a result, new hair starts entering the telogen phase much earlier than expected, leading to follicular miniaturization and hair thinning, which eventually results in noticeable balding. Medications like finasteride and dutastride can significantly reduce DHT, helping restore the hair cycle and gradually recover follicles. The hair remains in the anagen phase for longer, with thicker, more pigmented strands and reduced shedding. Treatment requires patience and consistency. Although synchronized shedding might initially occur, it will stabilize as follicles establish their growth patterns. The goal is to slow, stop, or even reverse miniaturization, though expectations should remain realistic. Stick to your treatment plan, avoid frequent changes, and manage expectations for the best results. Consistent use of 5-alpha reductase inhibitors will maintain improvements, leading to thicker and fuller hair over time. Okay, so that's it for this video. So if this was somewhat helpful, consider becoming a channel member today. It's only about $2 a month. That's way less than your cup of coffee and other vices and addictions you may have. And also, it would certainly help me out. And at the same time, please share this video with other people who may be confused when it comes to shedding. Because I get this question a lot, and I'm hoping by just making this video, it can be clear to people that, hey, stop freaking out about shedding. And honestly, if you're so concerned about if an asteroid is going to work for you or won't work for you, you might as well just go for Dutastride. Just my opinion, not a doctor, just a guy on YouTube, right? But you might as well just go to Dutastride, ask your doctor about it. And please don't get too hung up over the side effects. It could be nocebo, right? When you prompt yourself with your psychology to think negatively about a particular treatment because you may have heard some stories online or some anecdotes in real life, this can prime you to think that the treatment will do that to you on a you know subconscious kind of level. So I'm just rambling at this point, but if you got this far in the video, comment in the comment section below, W. Yes, like the literal letter W. W, W, W. W. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate you guys, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.